Hello and welcome to Endor Engage Model Railway. I'm Jonathan. A little while ago I mentioned that I'd bought a Rails Connect point motor controller to experiment with. This video is about what I did and what I concluded. I didn't film much of my original installation of the controller. Almost all of the footage in this video is from demonstrations later on. These controllers advertise themselves as suitable for controlling existing solenoid point motors, with switching control being possible from a momentary contact switch or from DCC. I disconnected the relevant cables from one of Endor's point motors and started to wire in the Rails Connect controller. It wasn't quite the straight up replacement that I thought it would be, but that was caused mostly by my own lack of thinking things through and partly by the lack of detail in the instructions. The controller can be powered by DCC track power or by DC. I decided to use the DCC track power for these experiments. My existing momentary switches briefly connect the relevant point motor to the single gauge master capacitor discharge unit. This means that all of the switches can share a common connection to the CDU, which reduces the number of cables that I have going from the layout to the switches. However, the Rails Connect controller has its own CDU. This means each controller needs three cables going to its switch. If I were to use these controllers for all of the point motors, then I'd need to take seven more cables out to the array of switches. That's one relatively minor disadvantage. To continue the experiment, I didn't connect the controller to a switch. I just touched a cable to the relevant terminal. And as this video shows, it was indeed perfectly successful at controlling the point motor. The next consideration was the LEDs. It dawned on me that each controller is supplying the power for its two LEDs, so I wouldn't be able to use them with my existing LED setup. For those, I need a 12 volt power source, and I don't want either of the point's LEDs to have power if the route isn't set for it. I explained this in video number 5, from just after 3 minutes in, if you're interested in the detail. I also noticed that there was no information about how much power the controller supplies to its LEDs, so I measured it with a multimeter, and it came out at 4.3 volts. I also emailed Rails of Sheffield about it, who told me I needed to ask DCC Concepts. So, I found the email address for DCC Concepts and emailed them. They said the LED power is about 4 volts, and they said a resistor would therefore be required. So a heads up to anyone thinking of using these. Be careful with the LEDs. If your LEDs take less than 4.3 volts, you'll need to add an appropriate resistor to avoid blowing them up. This is important and simple information to provide, so I don't know why there's no mention of it in the instructions. Here I add some LEDs just for a demonstration. These are 3.2 volt LEDs that can tolerate a maximum current of 0.03 amps. With 1.1 volts left to dissipate, I needed to find the right resistor size so with R equals V over I, that's 1.1 divided by 0.03, which gives about 37 ohms. The nearest resistors I have that are no less than that are 47 ohms, so I used one of those and put it in the connection that both LEDs have in common. The instructions also don't mention LED polarity, which again would have been pretty simple to include and would have been very useful. Since LEDs are diodes, it should be safe to experiment, so using a 3 volt battery, I first checked that my LEDs worked, then just tried them out with the controller to find the right orientation. My experiments showed that the red and black connections in the instructions, labelled left and right on the unit, are negative, and the green one, labelled LED on the unit, is positive. The instructions use red, green and black for the various connections, or left and right on the unit rather than red or black. I assumed that they are labelled consistently and connected the point frog power accordingly. I then used a multimeter to check the frog polarity. If it's correctly wired and receiving power, then there'll be a roughly 13 volt difference between the frog and the opposite rail. There's a problem here though. I didn't realise I hadn't actually connected the frog wire. The multimeter shows the expected readings, but that's the electrofrog doing its thing and collecting power from the switch rail's contact with the stock rail. I've done a separate test with some LEDs to show that the frog switch part of the Rails Connect unit is working properly. It's connecting one LED or the other to a 3 volt battery. I reasoned that the frog switch could be used to control my existing relays, since it's just connecting the red or black terminal to the green, so it would still be possible to use these Rails Connect controllers and have my existing LEDs working. Here I demonstrate the unit controlling the 12 volt DC supply to relay number 2, which in turn is switching the LED that's in the track. The disadvantage here is that I'd still have to keep the existing relays and associated wires, but also find space for 9 of these Rails Connect controllers. Although they'd be replacing my existing CDU, I didn't actually have any problems with that element for my existing setup, 
so I would effectively just be using them as a replacement for the auxiliary switches on the PM1s. These controllers are roughly £12 each in March 2023, which I think is pretty good for what they can do, but a micro switch is less than 50 pence. In the case of a pack of 20 for 4 99 they're only 25 pence each. So for what I wanted to achieve, price was another downside of the Rails Connect controllers. With those things considered, I decided to go with micro switches, and I talked about their installation in video number 13. In my original experiment, I didn't connect the Rails Connect controller to my existing relays or point frogs, I just used it to switch the point motor. But for this video, I tried to get all things working together and ran into two issues. The first was with using track power for the input. As I've mentioned in a previous video, the frog on Pico Electrofrog points physically connect to the stock rails, so if the power connected to the frog isn't in sync with the position of the switch rails, then there'll be a short circuit. I had a short circuit when setting things up, so my DCC controller kept cutting the power, but that meant the Rails Connect controller didn't have enough power to switch the point to the correct position. So although it's possible to use track power for these, it might be better to use an independent power supply. The second issue is reliability. I spent a while trying to work out what I'd done wrong, because the point motor wasn't getting switched even when there wasn't a short circuit, but the problem is that this controller isn't working properly anymore. I could easily check that the point motor was working by reconnecting it to its usual setup. I checked connections and instructions many times, and I tried with a different point motor in a test independent from the rest of the railway, to be absolutely sure I had the right connections. Maybe when I had the short circuits in the track, something somehow got fried, or maybe it broke all by itself. I don't really have any way of knowing, but I'm convinced that I wired it correctly in my tests, so I think it's more likely it broke itself. What I know for certain is that those microswitches are still working, no faults yet, which in my experience on Endor means they're beating PM1s and Rails Connect on both price and reliability. Actually trying to install the Rails Connect point motor controller made me think much more clearly about what it could and couldn't do, so I'm glad I only bought one and that I bought it with experimentation in mind. I'm overdue a top tip, so here's top tip number four for this often expensive hobby. Do small experiments before buying in bulk. That's all for now. Bye-bye.